Hi guys, it's Teresa of Larkin Design. I'm here today with a traditional layout for you that I wanted to show you how to take an inspiration image. Um, for example, an image that you see from Pinterest and then to translate that into a sketch and then to translate that sketch into a traditional layout. And so I'm starting with this image. This um, I found in my Pinterest journeys, um, my Pinterest binges, if you will. <laughs> and um, it's taken from the fashion industry. And so I saw, you know, kind of two sides here, a left-hand side and a right-hand side, both sort of squarish, one with the images on the upper side and then the other with the images on the lower side. And um, so I thought I would translate that into this sketch. And this is the sketch that I'm going to work with today. So I created this um, in Photoshop. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is available on my blog. You can um, pin it from there. Or um, if you want to just save the image, that's fine with me. It's available. And um, so that's what I'm going to be working with today. And so I'm going to um, head on over to the process video and I will see you there. Okay, and so I ha now have my photos trimmed and I have them laid out on my cardstock. This is basil cardstock. It's just a plain whatever. I don't know. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to use my Pink Paisley Take Me Away collection by Paige Taylor Evans. And so I'm just sort of going through some of the products. And these are the papers that I've selected. And um, at this point, I'm trimming out my papers. You guys know I've talked before about how the trimming of the papers is always the scary part for me. And so to overcome that, I've been making a point of trimming my papers first. Um, and sometimes it's just a random sort of trimming. I sort of have, you know, a little idea of some strips are probably three and a half by nine and some are maybe four by seven. Um, I don't really have any science to that. It's just sort of random pieces that I think show the pattern a little bit. And of course, a lot of these are going to be hidden by the photos anyway. So I just want a little bit showing. And um, I, did, I did write down the dimensions on the sketch itself. So those are on them. And then there are some that I didn't put on the sketch some of the smaller pieces because they were just left over um, or they were the marketing strips so you know you can of course add and subtract however you would like to do that um, that's just how it how it ended up working out for me and um, so now I'm going to place the patterned papers themselves and um, I pretty much have four basic patterns that I've, that I've put down. And then I'm just sort of accenting around the photos. And my goal with the other little tiny pieces of paper that I'm bringing in is one, for layering, and two, because they, cre they become the homes for the embellishments. So... Um, where you see the layering going on is where I'm going to do a little bit of mixed media and where I'm going to layer some of the embellishments on top. Um, so that's sort of my thought and planning process around this. Um, and of course, you know, you can, you can choose to just do one embellishment cluster or you could do yours in a different location than I have. Um, it's it's entirely you know up to you what you want to do on your layout and um, how you want to take this and make it your own. 
And you'll notice as well that I have um, included my journaling on the cardstock already. And so um, I brought, I sort of did a template in Photoshop and brought my photos into my Photoshop template so that I knew where I wanted to place the journaling and then I um, just printed that 12 by 12 out with just the journaling on it. Um, that I feel like I get more written when I do it that way. Um, so, but if you if you don't want to print out your 12 by 12 or you don't have that ability, you could always put those on a journaling card, put your journaling on a journaling card, or you could just handwrite it right there as well. Um, either one of those options is a great option for including your journaling. Um, I think if you're going to do a journaling card, I would tuck it underneath one of the strips just to link it to the rest of that um, cluster and the, those elements that are on that page. So that's the pattern paper on the left hand side and now I'm going to the right hand side and I'm going to refill my adhesive and um, adhere the rest of these down. And so the layout that I am working on here today is just a group of photos. We went to the park um, about two weeks ago now and um, I just took some photos there. I didn't take a lot of photos, just whatever came to us. Um, we were at a local park here in Kernersville and that that park has a, um, a, a veterans memorial and so those are the photos that you will see in the upper left hand corner um, they're from that memorial so we walked around there a little bit we had a picnic lunch and the kids mostly played and I just relaxed it was a really really nice afternoon And then you'll see here, I'm trying to figure out where I want to put these marketing strips. Um, I had thought I wanted a lot of horizontal elements, and it is a very horizontal layout. Um, and that's cool, right? Some are vertical, some are horizontal, some are more diagonal. Um, so I'm just working working through that here. And then what I'm going to do is I am once I get everything adhered down, I'm going to grab my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch these down again. And um so after my last adventure with gold thread, I decided to go shopping and buy all the all the metallic thread. <laughs> um so I did indeed find some single single thread that works really well for sewing and I sort of got my tension straightened out, I think. Um, so it's sewing with metallic thread is different than regular thread, but it's worth it. And um, so I'm using this mint green kind of color to to sew these down with. And I'm just doing it along the edge in the horizontal direction. I didn't do any stitching in the vertical direction. So that'll take me a few minutes.
did end up breaking once or twice on this adventure. Um, so that's okay. And then I'm just going to wrap this up. You did also see me um, erasing my pencil lines. I usually draw the, uh, a few light lines around my pattern paper and my photos before I adhere them down just so that I can remember where I'm putting everything and then I'll go back and erase those. So you saw me do that as well. And um, the stitching is just about done here. There. And now I'm going to just trim all these, all these, um, loose strings and you'll see me take the back of this and um, that's just to a little insurance policy to try to make sure that those stitches don't come out um, I haven't actually had any of my stitches come out on my layouts in the past so but I also like on the on the ends on the the on the seams that go to the edge of the page. I like to pull that that thread around so that it looks finished on the front side as well. And then some of these I'm going to tape down on the front, and I'm just going to make sure that the tape will be hidden behind the photos so you won't be able to see that. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> I think that, you know, the stitching does take a little bit of time, but it does add a little extra dimension, just a little something to these papers. And then I'm going to work on the other side as well and just do the same thing. and then we'll get back to the photos themselves and I'm going to I'm just making sure here that I have that that I have that tape hidden behind the photo there all right so that's what it looks like at this point with just the pattern papers and the stitching and now I'm going to do a little bit of mixed media I'm going to use that polka dot stencil to do um, some gesso stenciling. Normally I do modeling paste, but I just wanted something a little bit thinner, one, and two, I wanted it to have a chance to grab onto this um, vintage glitter. Um, this glitter is actually, it's called Luco Sparkling Tinsel, and um, it's by the Leo Olfelder company and it's I will tell you that one of my very 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 most dear friends in the whole wide world found this bottle for me at an estate sale and gave it to me as a very special gift and um, so I'm hoarding it 
and sometimes I pull it out and use it like this. And um, but I will tell you that I have seen other bottles of this stuff on like Etsy for like thirty and thirty five dollars. So um, I'm not going to tell you that this stuff is readily available or that it's cheap or anything like that. Um, it's just one of those special things that <laughs> that I happen to have and that I like to use sometimes. So um, I'm just laying down the gesso over the stencil and then pouring the glitter over top of the gesso and letting it dry um, and letting that gesso grab it and so that it will adhere to that. Um, I do recommend if you're going to try something like this, um, if you want to just use a regular glitter, that's fine. I think those would look really cute too. Um, and you can always do a little spray sealer over top of it um, to make sure that that glitter doesn't go anywhere. And I'm going to go to the other side now and I'm just getting a feel for where the photos are going so that I know where to stencil and where not to stencil. Um, so no biggie here. I have to say that I did like using the gesso with the stencil. Um, that it was it was fun. It didn't feel as um, as bulky as the modeling paste. And then I'm gonna layer the glitter over it again. That's a lot of fun. I re I really like this technique. Um, and I really just wanted to to tone down some of those pattern papers just a little bit. Um, of course, then I added the glitter over top of it, so I don't know if it really toned anything down or not. <laughs> it just ended up being another layer, and so that's cool. All right, I did heat set these sheets and um, let them dry really well. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and adhere the photos down. Now that I have everything with the background done, <laughs> I'm going to use some pop dots. So you'll see me just grab those and then um, place those on the back of the photo. Now I have left a little tiny bit of space in between each of the photos. Um, I really wanted it to look like they were connected but each to stand alone. So, um, yeah, that's why there's a little tiny bit of space in between each of them. And I also wanted the photos to be, a, you know, a decent enough size to be able to see them. So I think that worked out. <laughs> you could certainly, if you wanted to mat your photos with a white cardstock, you could do that too. So I used some circle dots and some of the strips for my pop dots here. Either one. I, I'm finding that I'm running out of the larger pop dots, so I need to, I need to stock up again. I'm going to have a pop dot situation here. <laughs> And that was the last photo that needed to be adhered. And now it's time to have some fun with the embellishments. And so I know that I had um, left space for the title on the left hand side. So I'm just going to figure out where I want to place that. Um, and then I'm going to add some embellishments. I want to use I love those paper clips. Love, love, love those paper clips. Um, so I decided to use this one horizontally instead of vertically. And then that becomes a great beginning of a cluster of embellishments.
I did add some pop dots behind that little flag on the paper clip so that it wouldn't like move around. I don't know if I can really give any rhyme or reason for where I placed my embellishments. Um, I just look for the edges of things, the corners of your photos, the edges of your photos. Um, that tends to be my strategy. Sometimes you can do a visual triangle if you want to. Um, I don't know if I, I don't think I really have a visual triangle on this layout. I think that the embellishments sort of lead your eye around the layout as a whole because they sort of circle the the photographs. Um, I don't know. I really am just putting things where I like. And y'all have heard me say that in the past. Um, use the products you love, make the layouts you love, and just put put it put down what you like. Put it where you like to put it and don't really overthink design decisions. Um, now I'm working over here these little, these little wood shapes. Um, they fascinate me and I really like them. And so I decided that I'm going to use this little scallop circle. Um, I want to layer on top of those polka dots a little bit. So I'm um, figuring out what I want to do with that scallop circle. Now that I've cut it in half, and it cut pretty easily, actually. Um, so that's a fun little piece. <laughs> and I just sort of let it go off the side there on the left hand. And then I'm going to adhere those with glue dots. And that actually worked out pretty well. Um, just to use the glue dots. And then I have the little roller stamp. There was a, a roller stamp with this collection, which is totally cute. And um, so I used some of the sentiments from it. And my stays on ink. And I've been liking this sort of random stamping <laughs> lately. I think that um, I started doing that in my traveler's notebooks over the summer. Um, just don't even ask me when I'm going to go back to traveler's notebooks because I don't see any time in the near future where I'm going to have time to jump back into those. Um, but anyway, I did start sort of this random stamping around the page and I love it so I'm gonna keep doing that <laughs> that's the Teresa way of um, stamping just random so I'm gonna finish up the embellishments here on the right hand side I'm also gonna add my date I'm using my little Target dollar spot date stamp um, it's a couple of years old now, and I didn't put the exact date on this layout. I just put the month and the year, and that's fine. It's no big deal. I'm going to use a couple more of those wood pieces and a couple of more of the word sentiments randomly. <laughs> And then I put one up there at the very top, and um, yeah, that probably didn't turn out quite the way that I thought it would, but it's okay. I'll end up adding another little um, foam sticker up there. You'll see me at the very end. And then I'm going to pretty much wrap up this layout for you. Um, thanks so much for watching. I hope that you will like and comment and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And um, 
Let's see, I think I have a programming note. I'm going to do some December daily videos next week. So look for those. Um, I might be a little bit off schedule next week in just to allow for December daily. So I will see you back here then. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.